greetings for the afternoon i dr anirudh babar member of the department of cultural science in the coordinator of the talks webinar series all heartedly welcome you today uh, we are going to uh, we are going to have a second lecture in the series uh, titled the relevance and significance of uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar today and uh, tomorrow. The previous lecture, that is the first lecture, the opening lecture in the series, delivered by Madam Gitachi, and uh, we were quite enlightened because of that. Today we have uh, equally energetic, enlightened, intellectual. Dr. Salikyo Sankam with us as our guest. Uh, the title of his uh, presentation uh, is Caste and Tribes, Ambedkar's Thoughts on Social Division. Dr. Salikyo uh, is an assistant professor at present uh, working uh, in the political science and national religious department of the Northeast uh, Christian University. And uh, it was uh, uh, really a privilege for me uh, to have uh, Dr. Saliki here, uh, not only because uh, he's a friend of mine and I really uh, respect uh, you know, the broad spectrum of his intellect, but also his uh, genuine desire to discuss uh, Mbedkar Dr. Baker in the London context. Uh, I sincerely welcome uh, Dr. Salitri uh, to this uh, virtual platform once again, and uh, we are really happy to have you. Uh, before we uh, officially begin, let me just quote uh, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. Dr. Ambedkar says, freedom of mind is the real freedom. A person whose mind is not free, though he may not be in chains, is a slave, not a free man. One whose mind is not free, though he may not be in prison, is a prisoner and not a free man. One whose mind is not free, though alive, is no better than dead. Freedom of mind is a proof of one's existence. Yes, dear friends. Freedom of mind is a proof of one's existence. And uh, that is the reason I believe we have gathered here to exercise our freedom of mind, to discuss a baker in another context, and to also help ourselves to understand that how Ambedkarism or Ambedkarite philosophy parts of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar how they are relevant in the Nada context, how Dr. Ambedkar is connected with all of us, with you and me. To help us to understand, we have Dr. Salikyu. So now I request uh, Dr. Salikyu to kindly please uh, take a charge of this virtual stage. And uh, we are really eager to hear you out, sir. Stage is all yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please go. Okay, uh, can everybody hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, yes. yes very sure. clear. Okay, okay, all right. So I'm, I'm kind of, uh, kind of uh, apprehensive about switching on my camera because I have a very old, you know, system with me, and whenever I do switch on the camera, it, you know, my uh, connection gets off and it becomes too much for the old laptop to handle. So let me just try and see if I can switch on the laptop uh, camera and see if that works. I'm not sure. Uh, is that fine? Can you guys hear me properly? No disturbance, right? No, not at all. We can see you. I can okay. hear you. 
Okay, that's very good. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Anirudh, for this uh, very you know generous introduction. I don't deserve any of the uh, edul uh, adulation that you have given that you have you know that given to me. I don't think I deserve any <laughs> any bit of it. But thank you so much, and I'm very humbled and very undeserving, regardless. And uh, thank you for inviting me for this uh, talk again. And it's been an honor to actually you know be part of um, degree of thought. I think uh, I hope that I do enjoy a lot coming and you know speaking um, in this kind of in this kind of uh, lectures, and I do hope that you'll not get bored of you know listening to me over and over again. So, um, with that said, I thank uh, Tetsu College as well as Dr. Anirud and the Department of Political Science Tetsu College for organizing such a wonderful uh, talk and also inviting me to to speak. And um, when I was you know when I was actually um, uh, called by. Uh, I, whenever I received uh, a message from from Dr. Anirudh and asking me to speak on Dr. Ambedkar, I was kind of apprehensive of so many reasons. I was apprehensive for so many reasons, not because you see, it's, uh, Ambedkar is, is a highly, um, for me at least, for me at least, from my understanding of Ambedkar, I appreciate him very much. I, I actually, you know, do have high regard for his thoughts and his philosophy. And that makes it even more difficult for me to, you know, to, to for me to talk about Ambedkar because, because it's not, it's very easy to misunderstand him, and that's why history has been so unkind to Ambedkar and has been more than generous, very, very generous, very, very generous to Gandhi, which history should not. But I'll, but regardless of your, your opinion, I mean, and regardless of my opinion, I feel that history has been kind of un, un, unkind, very unkind to to Ambedkar for this simple reason because. He is a very complex thought. He is a very complex thinker, and and that's why it makes it very difficult for me to actually. I was quite apprehensive for that for, for, for that sole reason as to how shall I try to try to incorporate and try to make Ambedkar's thoughts as relevant as possible in in today's society, especially here in Nagaland. And how do I relate his thoughts to? To Nagaland in, in the context of Nagaland. Hence, I was kind of um, apprehensive. You know, after I said, I was after I said, okay, I was still trying to come up and think about what should I, you know, what should I give a talk on. And it struck me that, you know, it struck me that um, his idea, his 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 uh, fight, his struggle against the caste system in India has a lot to say and has, has a lot to say with regards to how we can still learn some valuable lessons and apply that and also learn some better and also get some ideas about how to deal with this kind of issues here in Nagaland. So I do hope that, you know, I do hope that whatever I say, even though I do, uh, even though I'm unworthy to speak on, on, on ideas of Ambedkar, regardless, I do hope that I will do justice to his thoughts and also do justice to this, uh, to this lecture. So first things first, so you see, um, I don't, I think we should all agree, uh, many people do agree that he has played, Dr. Ambedkar has played an influential role in the construction of what we know as modern India. We have, we have one of the greatest constitutions in the world, the Indian constitution. It is one of the greatest in the world, obviously the largest, but for, for, but for a very good reason, it is the longest, the longest um, constitution in the world. And the reason is because I, I see that without his, without what he has done, without his contribution to the constitution of India, I think uh, the kind of privilege that we enjoy, especially as a, as, a, as a person of tribal origins, if you think about it, we live in a tribal state. So we would have, we would not enjoy the kind of privilege that we enjoy if it weren't because of Ambedkar. No doubt, Ambedkar had a lot of challenges ahead of him. He had, when he was framing the constitution of India, he had to, he had, it was not easy for him. He struggled a lot. He competed with the ideas and thoughts of, of Gandhi and also ideas and thoughts of Nehru. So now you have three great giants of Indian, modern Indian history, Gandhi, Ambedkar and Nehru. And in spite of the giants and heavyweights of Gandhi and Nehru, Ambedkar somehow managed to ensure that even the even the weaker section, weaker section of the Indian society will not be left out and will not be exploited. And so that that for for that reason alone, I I I I am very very appreciative of what of what Ambedkar has done for for this country. 
And as to the thought of how do we relate the issues of his understanding of caste, the Indian caste system, and how it relates to us here in Nagaland, is this. In order to understand that, I think it would be good if I can, if I can just, you know, um, maybe give a paranomic view about the caste system in India. You see, I'm sure many of you would know more or more, and if not, have a better idea about the caste system than I do. But regardless, if I'm wrong, please do correct me. And but from what I see and from his thought is that, you see, the reason why Ambedkar was so much against the caste system in India was because it was very, very divisive. It divided the society. And when a society is divided, it is very difficult to, to achieve any sort of unity. Not just unity, but it's very difficult to achieve anything in the society. And it creates, for instance, from his own experiences, it creates prejudice, discrimination, right? Exploiting the weak and all kinds of biasness and all kinds of inhuman treatment, right? And all kinds of indignation which you know which uh, which one can face because of one's race culture and creed and remember india has always been a very divided society right from its very inception and we cannot for it's very you, it's very difficult to say that india was united it wasn't right so socially socially it was not it was not united we can think of a unity of india only in terms of or in times of say for instance the the in the times of um, Ashoka would be one. Then you can think of the Mughal Empire as one, but united India and also the British, the colonials, whether we like it or not, they were the ones who united India, brought India as a whole. But other than that, other than those three few instances, for the most part of Indian history, we were divided socially, culturally. You, you name it, we were divided. Even within, even within the own, with, even within own Hindu system, the Hindu caste system, you have so many caste system and then you have so many divisions. And that created more, more divisions, which, which for better or for worse, created, created uh, uh, caste such as the Talits to which uh, Ambedkar belonged to, right? And, and hence those Talits or those, those untouchables were faced in, in the daily lives, even to this day, right? Even to this day, in the daily lives, they face numerous discrimination, prejudice, biasness, inhuman treatment, right? Insults, indignations. So all these things would have, would have, and I'm sure it has, and it had, had a huge influence upon Ambedkar. And seeing that Ambedkar himself coming from the Dalit communities, from the untouchables, we can see that how his own life experiences has his own life experiences has influenced him to fight against and even struggle to bring an end to this caste system and bring an annihilation or the elimination of the caste system in India. And for whatever reason, I think uh, we must say that his insights, his his own personal experiences gave a very critical and a penetrating insights into, into the things which, into the, uh, into the negativities or the limitations or negative consequences of such divisions in the society. Or as he says to God Ambedkar himself, he says, there cannot be more degrading system of social organization than the caste system. And I think it is quite remarkable, right? Seeing that India, that Indian society even to this day, is you know divided along the structure and if you think about it, even nagaland itself we may say that tribe is different caste is different however tribe and caste if you just remove the caste and the tribe it's more or less the same in the caste system you have division of people right according to the caste and here in, in tribal system here in here in nagaland the society itself is structured along this tribal system where everybody is you know somehow pigeonholed and categorized into different tribes so where you belong in Nagaland, right? Which tribe you belong to, it more or less influences your daily life experiences, much in the same way as the caste system. In the caste system, you have the the, the, the Brahmins, the, the warrior class, the, the, the merchants, right? And the uh, artisans, and then you have the untouchables. So to, according to where you belong to, you were made out with certain kind of experiences, much in the same way here in Nagaland, the, uh, to which tribe you belong to, the kind of experiences you have in Nagaland depends upon the uh, depends upon which tribe you belong to, right? So if you belong to the weaker class, if you belong to the weaker tribe or a smaller tribe, then you are more or less like 
you you do know what kind of experiences you do face right some sort of discrimination much in the same way in the caste system itself if you belong to a certain caste the kind of experiences the kind of daily life experiences that you go through belonged is, is pretty much colored by the way uh, your experiences is colored by which category of caste you belong to and this we can see it explicitly in Ampetskar life himself, right? If you think about it, there are so many numerous instances that I can think of, right? Where to use Ampetskar, you know, uh, experience is that, you see, even from his very young age, from his schooling days, he saw, he experienced the indignation of being a Dalit, right? He saw his whole society, his whole community being treated worse than an animal. Right? For instance, a pauper would not cut his hair because he belonged to a, to a Dalit. Even his own teacher would not drink right, from the same mug of water, from, from the same jug of water in the school. Even his own teacher disinvited Ambedkar right, because he belonged, Ambedkar belonged to a Dalit tribe. When he was young, for instance, Ambedkar says that he got a ride on a pull-up cart, right, on the cart. And then whenever the guy uh, riding the pull-up cart, uh, pull cart asked Ambedkar what tribe, what caste he belonged to, the person driving the cart was very, very horrified and angry. And then he was angry because Ambedkar's presence have sullied, dirtied the whole environment, dirtied and make it impure his, his, own, uh, his own buffaloes, right? Just imagine that. And even when he was drafting the constitution of India itself, Whenever he traveled all over India, he was not, he was, he was denied even in hotels because he belonged to a Dalit community. So imagine those kinds of humiliating, right? Humiliating and insulting experiences. How would you feel? Put yourself in these shoes and ask yourself that question. How would you feel? Much in the same way here, you can think about the tribe. If you belong to a weaker tribe, weak tribe, a smaller tribe, you are made up with certain kind of insults and discriminations. What can you do? Nothing, obviously, right? That's the fact. I'm not trying to deny it. Nobody will deny it. There's nothing that you can do. If you belong to a higher, if you belong to a larger tribe, or as we call it here in Nagaland, a uh, more advanced tribe, you can do pretty much what you can do and then take certain advantages of the situation, right? But in case of the weaker tribe, there's very different, there's very little difference as to what, what you can do and what you cannot do. So those are the kinds of experiences which we can actually, you know, those are the parallels that we can learn from Ambedkar, uh, from Ambedkar's own experience. And for him, the most important question for a very divided societies, because he knew, Ambedkar knew that India has always been a divided society. So the question for him was, how do we ensure unity? How do we not how do we ensure that the, the new country, India, which had very recently gained its independence from the British colonial empire, how do they preserve its independence? So he asked, can Indians, for instance, he says, can Indians place, will Indians place their caste above their country? Or will they place their country above their caste? And in fact, the answer he says is that I don't know. He says, I don't know whether Indians will, will place their caste above the country or will they place their country above the caste system. Because he knew the intrinsic and the inherent, uh, inherent nature of this caste system in India. Not just in India, but, but in, not, it would be wrong to say in India, but in this inherent caste system, this is caste system inherent to the to, to, to the Hindu system, to, to the Hindu um, worldview, right? So now the thing is, this is very very gets interesting because you see, in such times when Ambedkar was trying to was somehow trying to make sure that the country won't disintegrate, that the country will stay united, but also we bring about the ensure social justice, right? Social justice to those weaker section of the Indian society. Now, when he was doing that, as he was trying, struggling to bring an end to the caste system, we have, we have characters such as Mahatma Gandhi, right? Mahatma Gandhi. Now, Gandhi 
we we know how Gandhi. We know the story of Gandhi. We all know. We now know him to be the. We now call him the father of the nation. Yes. However, it is interesting for me because I I I I I am very interested in the debate. I've always been very interested in the debate between Gandhi and Ambedkar. And this is where we should. This is where we see the real real character of Ambedkar. And this is also where we see the real character of Gandhi. You see. Gandhi was against. Gandhi also was in favor of ending the caste system, or not just. Not, I'm sorry, that's not. Gandhi was in favor of ending the untouchabilities, right? Untouchabilities. However, he was against a termination of the caste system in India, while Ambedkar himself was struggling to bring an end, not just emancipate the Dalit community, but also bring an end to the caste system in India. And this is where Gandhi and this is where Gandhi and uh, Ambedkar went head to head. And in many instances, I, I will not go into detail because you know it's, it's a long story. What we find is that, in many ways, we see the true character of Gandhi and the true character of Ambedkar. Ambedkar, he he saw like he has experienced humiliation, indignation, insults. The realities of his experiences cannot be comprehended by Gandhi because Gandhi belonged to a higher caste than than Ambedkar. So Gandhi's social, Gandhi's living reality experiences was different and was incomprehensible to. It was Gandhi was incomprehensible and uh, his his life uh, Ambedkar Ambedkar's life experiences were incomprehensible for Gandhi. Why? Because. Gandhi did not face the same kind of insults. He did not. He did not face the same kind of indignation, right, and humiliation in India, in his own country. While Ambedkar did, even when he was. Uh, speaker, I guess uh, got disconnected. Uh, let us have patience. Uh, he will join us shortly. Uh, please have patience. There must be definitely some technical issues. Uh, he will be right back. Let us have patience. He will join us shortly. Thank you. Please kindly do not leave. Uh, speaker will join us shortly. There have been some technical issues uh, at uh, speaker side. Uh, we will uh, actually have to wait for a few more moments uh, till we sort out all the issues. Uh, patience is uh, really appreciated because the talk, I believe, is very, very important. So kindly give us, uh, kindly give some time to our speaker. Thank you.
The session is going on. Uh, the speaker is facing some technical issues. Please do, do not uh, leave this uh, virtual stage. Uh, let us have some patience. Uh, let us uh, give respect uh, uh, to the speaker. He must be having some technical issues. We have to wait for a few more minutes. Thank you. Dr. Salik, you said you had joined Yes, us. yes. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 sir. So, okay. sir, I, bet, I, I, I better request you to kindly switch off uh, your camera, sir. Yes, yes, I'm going to do that. Yes, I'm going to do that, yeah. Yeah, that would be great, sir. Yeah, so I think that's better now, right? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect. Uh, so, we can, yeah, so we can save some data yeah. also. Yeah. Yes, 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 exactly. Yeah. So as I was saying, it depends, even here in Nagaland, it depends if you belong in, in a hierarchy of tribes, it depends where you are. And depending upon where you are, if you belong to a smaller ones, then you are pretty much, you know, taken advantage of. Indeed. And maybe you are discriminated, but what can you do? If you go and ask any person, not any person from Nagaland who belongs to a smaller tribes, they will tell you. And in fact, it's not difficult to see. Of course, I'm not saying that, you know, everything is, everything is horrible, but you do see this kind of, of discriminations. And in other words, we can, we can learn something from what Ambedkar is talking. You see, one thing I can tell you, uh, let me just quote Ambedkar. I think, I think this would, this would uh, give you much more clarity. He says, the untouchables are illiterate, ill-treated, and untouchables for ages. All public services were close to them. Thus, being deprived of social, religious, and civil rights, they had no chance of bettering their conditions. In short, they were born in debt and perished in debt. They were untouchables, they were born untouchables, they lived untouchables, and they died as untouchables. Now, this is, now these words, I, I do not know whenever you hear this word, thoughts, words, speeches of Ambedkar, I do not know how you feel, but it shows the magnitude, the magnitude of humiliation, indignation, discrimination, and insults measured out to Ambedkar because of his caste, right? And this is something that we can all relate to in here, even here in Nagaland, where you have tribes along this, uh, constituted along the hierarchy of tribes, right? And so he says that, and, and so he says, you see, because of this such destructive, elements right that the which, uh, the which uh, caste system can 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 propagate he saw that any kind of social division right any kind of social divisions in the society undermines the very essence of that society right that's why if you if you look at one of his speeches in one of his last uh, speeches in the constituent assembly he made a powerful assertion saying that the caste are anti-national in the first place because they bring about separation in social life. They are anti-national also because they generate jealousy and antipathy between castes and castes. You see, this is something that we can all you know, relate to because even here, in if 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 Ambedkar says that a caste is anti-national because it stands in the way of unity because it creates separation in social life, it creates jealousy and antipathy between castes and castes. Then we can say the same thing with regards to tribes. We can say that tribes is itself in Nagaland and the national because it brings about separation in the social life in Nagaland among the people in Nagaland, and also it creates jealousy and antipathy, right? And it creates prejudice and discrimination and disempowerment and selfish group interests and and fight for self and fight fight and control over the resource to dominate the state resources. Right in Nagaland, you see same thing. So all these things, all these divisions that we have, that all the, the the divisions that tribe creates, it creates this unity. One can never say, just like the caste system can never unite, can never unite, and always been a source of conflict in the Indian society. Much in the same way here in Nagaland, the tribe is always is always a source of conflict. It's always a source of antipathy. It's always a source of prejudice and exploitation. And it's always a source of anti-nationalism, whatever you call it. You see, because if 
if the cast, if it looks like if we if we ask the same question which Ambedkar has asked, asking, will the Indians place the, their country above their creed, or will they place their creed above the country? I think we can pretty much say now that even in India at this present juncture, that people put their creed ahead of their country, ahead of the interests of the country. Much in the same way here in Nagaland, if we ask, will you put your tribe above your society or will you put your society above your tribe? I think the answer is quite obvious. I think we can say in all, for all practical purposes that tribes is the most paramount thing or the most, uh, or the most paramount aspect of an individual's life here in Nagaland. And and I think this creates such and such kind of uh, division in the society along the tribal line creates, you can say, jealousy and hostility and animosity. In fact, if you look at, I mean, a very good example, very good recent example would be the March 22nd incident, right? I think it happened in, in Parent District. Many people lost their lives. Three or four people lost their lives. Civilians, they lost their lives, right? And you can see what happens when you have tribes, when people can hide behind the tribes, this is what happens. Injustice happens. But what, what has the state government done? Nothing, right? What has it done? Nothing. In other words, just like in the caste system, if a higher caste member, a member of a higher caste can get away with crimes, much in the same way I feel like in Nagaland, if you belong to a bigger tribe, you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want to do and get away with it. So that's, there you go, so there you have it. So that's what uh, caste system, so, so here we find the parallels between the caste system and the tribe system. You see, I, I want to say that, you see, just like, for instance, the, the caste system has been a pariah, right? A cancerous cell to Indian society, much in the same way, I think that tribe, tribe, is, tribe has always been in Nagaland, being a pariah, right? It has been a pariah and it is a pariah. It is the, it is the ultimate source of communalism, narrow-mindedness, prejudice, localism, and to use Ambedkar's own word, a tent of ignorance. This is what I, what I find. And indeed, I think one thing that I really appreciate and something which many people tend to, uh, tend to uh, not, um, under, not, not understand, but many people tend to ignore is, is the prescient insights of Ambedkar, of Ambedkar's thoughts. You see, because I said like uh, at the beginning of, the, of, of this lecture that, that, you see, history has been very unkind to Ambedkar, very, very unkind to Ambedkar. And that's why we tend to not see the, 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 the wealth of knowledge he has compared to that of Gandhi. Gandhi, he is... He is now what he is known to be what he is today because of public relations. I suppose you can say that public relations and, and advertisements. Other than that, I don't think he is anything but Mahatma, right? And in fact, Ambedkar never called Mahatma, um, never called Gandhi Mahatma. He only called Gandhi Mr. Gandhi, right? That was it, not Mahatma. Why? Because Ambedkar was very much influenced by the spiritualist Kabir. Right? I'm not sure if any one of you are aware of Kabir, but, but if you are, it's very good. If you're not, you might as well go and check it out. And as he says that we should, that there's no human being is worthy to be called Mahatma, right? Because it is, it's very difficult to be a human being. So how can you call somebody a human being who is, who finds it very difficult to be a human being, a Mahatma? So much in the same way, so like as I was saying, Ambedkar's thoughts is quite, it's, it's quite, uh, um, Ambedkar thought is very complex and also very, very insightful. And this is what he had to say, and this is his warning, and this is where I say that, that he's a very great thinker, it's because of this. You see, he says this, in his final speech, he says this, what perturbs me greatly is the fact that not only India has lost, has once before lost her independence, but she lost it by the infidelity and treachery of some of her own people. In the invasion by Sindh by Muhammad bin Qasim, the military commanders of King Dahar accepted bribes from the agents of Muhammad bin Qasim and refused to fight on the side of the king. It was Jay Chand who invited Muhammad Ghori to invade India and fight against Prithvi Raj and promised him the help of himself and the Solanki kings. When Shivaji was fighting for the liberation of Hindus, 
The other Maratha noblemen and the Rajput kings were fighting the battle on the side of the Mughal emperors. When the British were trying to destroy the Sikh rulers, Gulab Singh, their principal commander, sat silent and did not help to save the Sikh kingdom. In 1857, when a large part of India had declared a war against independence against the British, the Sikhs stood, watch, stood and watched the events as silent spectators. I think that says a lot. And just like India lost her independence because, the, because of the treachery and infidelity of her own people, much in the same way, because of tribes, because of tribes, Nagaland and the people of Nagaland has also lost and squandered many numerous chances to unite and achieve common cause. Common cause by failing to prudently utilize the freedom and privilege given to us by the constitution. And I think, I think that in Nagaland, as long as we have tribes, because our ultimate allegiance is given to our own tribe, I think treachery, deceit, infidelities are part and parcel of Nagaland. And we are unable to rise beyond the local vicinity of our own interests, of our own tribe. And I think that if you, if those who are very well aware and those who, those who have any kind of knowledge regarding the history of Nagaland and the political struggles of Nagaland, we will find numerous characters, numerous similar characters to the, like the one we find, like, uh, such as, uh, you know, we will find similar characters to the military commanders of King Tahar, Jai Chan, Maratha noblemen and the Rajput kings who fought on the side of the Mughal emperors against your own king and Kulab Singh. I think social division such as caste system or the tribe system, right? I think wherever they exist in whatever kind of form, they tend to cripple and destroy the very foundation of the structure. We are in such kind of society, injustice, prejudice, discrimination, humiliation, indignation becomes part and parcel of the society. And I think that with this fact, with this alone, we can find that just as India is perpetually perpetually inflicted by the sickness of caste. I think we find that same, same sort of sickness prevails in Nagaland, of course, along the lines of tribe. You see, you have also seen so many numerous, numerous news regarding, uh, I think it was last year, I think, there was a news in the, uh, the uh, there was, there was, I saw it on the, a piece of news from, I think it was in Uttar Pradesh or, or, or Charkhan, or uh, no, Uttar Pradesh or Chhattisga, where somewhere over there, there was a uh, an uh, un, that a Dalit girl was raped, right? A Dalit girl was raped, and then and then of course, nothing has happened, right? Nothing has happened because those people who raped her belong to a higher caste. So the kind of injustice which Ambedkar faced in his lifetime still exists and still goes on and still prevails much of India. And I think India and Nagaland are more or less, more, more or less along the same line of tragedy because a society full of potential but divided along the caste is sure to crumble. Much in the same way, um, Nagaland, a society very, very young, right, which is divided, which is divided along the tribal, tribal lines, is sure to be humiliated and is sure to crumble one day or the other. And of course, if we ask the same question, can people in Nagaland put their tribes ahead of the society or will they place the society above their tribe? I think the answer is quite obvious. I think people for years to come and for at least for generations to come, people will, people will always put in Nagaland, they will always put their tribe ahead of the society. Hence, a tragedy awaits. And I don't think this can be in any sense averted. Yeah, so with this very pessimistic note, I, I, I end my um, lecture. Thank you. Thanks so much. And I'm willing to take any kind of questions if you have. Don't be shy. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Salih Usanka. I mean, as usual, uh, the way you have uh, explained Ambedkar to us, it was uh, really enlightening. And uh, uh, yes, I mean, I'm sure uh, our speakers have uh, learned a lot. Uh, see, uh, what we learn uh, you know, from the history, especially how history understood Ambedkar and how the modern Indian society have perceived Ambedkar or rather the political undercurrents have uh, projected Ambedkar, then we can really understand that, yes, uh,
it's a tragic story that uh, the worth of Ambedkar was not recognized, you know, and the kind of, uh, you know, you may call it a discrimination, a visible discrimination that uh, Ambedkar was fighting for uh, throughout his life, you know, <laughs> remained even after, uh, you know, his uh, Mahaparinivan, uh, I should say that. Uh, now, when it comes to uh, the parallels uh, that you have uh, drawn between Indian caste system as well as the uh, uh, tribal system, I think there is a hell lot of uh, truth involved in that. Because uh, for me also, that uh, Nama society is certainly uh, not new. Uh, almost a decade I am exploring and trying to learn more and more about this society. And the more I learn about this society, the more disturbed I get. You know, mm. uh, yes. you know when, I, when, I, when I come across uh, the painful reality. So, so I, I just, uh, I, I just want to congratulate you first of all that uh, you <clears throat> other society. You know, because here uh, people know about Gandhi. They, they know Gandhi, they know, you know, Mahatma Gandhi. Even we have one Mahatma Gandhi chair, I guess, in Nagaland University. <laughs> but yeah, 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 but there is no one who, who actually understands uh, the complex, uh, uh, you know, the theories and uh, the philosophy of Dr. J. R. Ambedkar, right? And uh, maybe we can really, really implement the thoughts of Dr. Dr. Ambedkar's uh, in the interest of our own Naga society. So I uh, open this uh, uh, this platform for the question. So anybody has any question? Uh, Dorella, can I send you back in? And maybe if you have any question, you can just uh, shoot it. I give you some time. Um, it, yes, it's not a question, but rather uh, mm. I would like some suggestions from Dr. Salek, your side. Um, Sir, thank you so much for uh, showing us the bigger picture of tribalism along the uh, lines of caste and caste studies. Uh, well, I've been trying to explore the very idea of tribalism for quite some time now. And uh, it's the more we get into it, the more pessimistic we become because, uh, of course, because of the, uh, you know, the comparative study that we do along the side of caste system. But um, I want to seek for your optimistic view on how we can, as a young society that you have said, uh, push forward to a more inclusive society than, uh, than what we are now. Now, I, I, I think we don't necessarily see the uh, deep cause factor or the um, deep consequences that are going to come uh, along the line of tribalism, but uh, I think it's kind of very disturbing if we think deeply. Uh, but uh, what would you suggest? My, I, I just want to ask you that uh, what kind of suggestions would you give to a student who has just started exploring uh, the very idea of tribalism on how uh, we can be positive, like if not 10%, 5% positive about it, like, oh, okay, we have a way forward from here. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Uh, thank you, Miss. Uh, that was a very good question and a very interesting question, actually. And uh, b before, I, before I answer your question, uh, the Dr. Anirudh, uh, <laughs> was, uh, I think he, Dr. Anirudh himself, I think he's a very astute observer by what he said, because even he, like he, has, like he was saying, that he was, uh, he's been here for quite a while, and then the more he observes and examines uh, society here in Nagaland, the more disturb disturbing it gets, and he's quite right, he's very astute. And in fact, even I think he he has wrote uh, on Ambedkar's thoughts uh, in in our local newspapers so many times, and I actually appreciate his uh, his ideas on Ambedkar as well. So I think I so, yeah, so yeah, uh, so uh, Dr. Anirudh Ruth himself is very astute and a very astute observer. So that's what's one thing. And second, Miss um, set you right. I, th I hope that I'm you know pronouncing your name right, and uh, I do apologize yes. if I okay. Thank you, thank thank you, Miss. So yes, I mean uh, I. The, it's very difficult to say, like, uh, to, to, to truly understand the tribe because you also have to 
it's the, 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 the sad reality of people here in Nagaland is that the division is not just along the tribal lines, right? Yes, there is the, the, there's a discrimination along tribal lines, but also if you actually look deeper, you also find clan. You also, even within the tribe, you also divide among ourselves clan, according to clans. And, and again, if you look even deeper, it goes back to the, to the source of the village, right? So we are in a very worse position than the, than, than the, the caste system in India, because at least in caste system, it's just caste, that's it. But then here in Nagaland, we divide along tribes, and again, we divide along clans, and again, we divide along the village lines. So we are in a very horrible situation. And on top of that, for at least for the younger generation, I fear because I think the younger generations will be more tribal than we are today. Tribalism is worse now, but it'll get worse in, in your generation. And that's my fear. And I want to be positive and I want to give you some positive ways to how to, you know, maybe explore better or maybe, you know, try to do something for the society. I can say, but then I don't know if if that would be if what i say will be of any relevance to you because i can say one of the ways to somehow mitigate tribalism is for instance when everybody sees each other as a human being right whenever you start seeing each other as a human being regardless of your of the color of your skin regardless of the religion you follow regardless of the tribe you belong to regardless of anything that's one way of eliminating tribes just like it is one way of eliminating the caste system but I don't know, maybe, maybe you may be, maybe you may be the one person, you may be one of the person who sees everybody else as human beings, but then 99% of the society will not see like that, right? Will not see the way you see it. So the, the question becomes, how do you, how do you make those 99% of the society see each other as a human being? Well, that's, that's one thing. So. I mean, if, if you, if you, if you continue to press me and say, please tell me at least something so that, you know, so, so that we can mitigate tribalism here in Nagaland, then my answer. I guess again he encountered some technical issues. Uh, please have patience. Uh, this is very important subject of which uh, nobody talks you know, in Nagaland. And uh, uh, fortunately, uh, Dr. Salikya Sartam is uh, sharing with us. Let us have patience. Okay, Dr. are you there? Yes, 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 yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Please go ahead. Okay. Please go ahead. Okay. So, like I was saying, you have to start seeing others as a human being. Only then can you truly address the issues of division. Because as long as you see another person as belonging to a different tribe, speaking different language, following different religion, speaking different dialects, uh, uh, judge others based on their skin, then this division will always remain. So my answer would be, the only thing that you can do is that see each other as a human being. And as long as you do that, I think that's one way of addressing the issues of tribes and as well as caste. Other than that, I don't think I, I can. I don't think there's any other way of 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 addressing it at all. So yeah. So yeah. That's a good question, though. Good question. Uh, thank you, Dr. Salik, for this uh, elaborative answer. Uh, any other question? Uh, okay. Dr. Uh, Salik, uh, another observation. From yes. my side. Yes. Uh, well, uh, there is uh, one question that is uh, often being asked and uh, come up uh, in the public domain uh, regarding uh, the issue of uh, so called uh, child labor in Nagaland. Okay? Yes. Especially in the context of uh, the domestic helpers. And uh, yes. there is a general observation is that at the maximum domestic helpers, and I think. Uh, uh, it is quite visible, Dr. Salikyu, that uh, maximum domestic helpers belonging to, you know, so-called backward tribes, like Kimi, yes, uh, yes. Santam, you know, or uh, yes, Konya, yes. so on and yes, so forth. Yes. It is very rare, it is very rare to find, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
not a you know boy or a girl for yes. domestic help is working in some families so uh, as a as a observer i consider myself uh, simply as a keen observer so as a observer this is again a shocking reality for me because uh, why is it so that only kinyungan boys and girls only santam no. boys and girls only uh, only konyak boys and girls are to be found working in relatively you know uh, uh, the uh, what we call it uh, the highest status tribes houses working yes. for them uh, no. dr sanitu do you do you see any a tribal undercurrent uh, in this uh, dynamics I and mean, can you interpret it in that way uh, can you please help me to understand to verify my own claim that there is something seriously wrong you know with yeah. this thing what is your take on it the, no uh, doctor uh, doctor anirudh i mean that's a very good observation i mean i'm um, i'm actually i'm actually quite quite impressed by the observations that you're doing i think you are you are observing you know you are you are a very acute observer of social you know social discourse and social facts in society i think yeah, keep it up i would suggest you give it up it's very nice it's very thank you sir thank uh, you see that you're observing and 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 those things are disturbing you it's very good i that's, that that shows the, the the human connection we have right regardless of what we are all human beings so hence whenever things like this goes on you know we can't just you know just ignore it in fact i uh, me myself am a you know i am a domestic servant here at nikum I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding so yeah, well, coming back to the issue yeah, coming back to the issue uh, the, the thing is this i think you see whenever you are backward whenever you come uh, whenever you belong to a backward tribe it becomes very obvious it affects you psychologically there are also social economic reasons right you know, whenever we speak, uh, whenever in nagaland you speak of backward tribes such as you know like you mentioned those uh, that uh, sangtam or you know kemangan or konyak tribes or many other tribes whenever you speak of backward tribes it is uh, they are backward not just in terms of socio economic but also it has a psychological effect on the people themselves hence they become more willing to to uh, to serve in the servitude of others because because there's no self esteem and if there's no self esteem you you're willing to that if somebody from a from a higher higher tribe comes and says you know we will look take care of your children and then we'll take care of your children and you know we'll give them education and then their future will be good you tend to you tend to give in to those things because economically speaking you are in no position to take care of your children it is it would be the same as the caste system if you belong to a talit community if you belong to a talit community and a person of a higher caste comes to you and says don't worry even though you belong to a lower caste and even though you are treated like piece of piece of poop or piece of you know you know what i mean don't worry me i come from a higher tribe higher higher caste and i will look after your children like my own children right i will i will feed her feed him let let him let him or her go to school give her education and and her life will be good then what would you do if you belong to a talit community if you belong to a talit uh, talit family you would do the same thing so yes i think uh, in in the, that's why that's one of the reasons because uh, socio economically people are in no position to take care of their own children and the, the any kind of hope that they get whenever people from different from a higher tribe comes in and, and gives a a um um a, a ray of hope for the children then people tend to say okay because this or that person belongs to bigger tribe yeah, hence more connection hence you know the future will be more or less secured much in the same way in the caste system if you are from a talit community somebody from a higher caste comes and says we'll do this and that for your children who will not be taken away by that i think just like in india if you go and look at all the all the menial jobs which are being done by the talit communities it's it's the same as it's the same as over here where most of the domestic servants in the house of big individuals a big families they are done by that they, they are carried out by people mostly from you know backward areas and backward tribes so i think it's it has an undercurrent of tribes and people have people tend to stereotype of course for a good reason as well i'm not saying it's it's like nothing true uh, nothing true about it but there there are some truth to it but then we tend to stereotype that you know you know people from backward tribes are you know they are more willing to serve in as a domestic servants and even the parents of these backward tribes are more willing to send their children 
to you know uh, especially to a to a to a person belonging to a higher tribe household because you know they'll get education they'll you know you know they'll take care of them and then because they belong to a bigger tribe hence they'll be more or less secure so there's some sort of it's not just socioeconomic but also psychological i think it is it, it has more to do with psychology than socioeconomic because people can really people can really be you know um People can really be, uh, I don't know how to say it, um, can, bear the, uh, can bear the economic hardships. People can, people really can. But then, when, but if, if people are psychologically affected, then I mean, I think, I think that, that affects their whole indignation, self-esteem. And I think it has more to do with self-esteem than indignation. Because if you look at the bigger tribe, if you go and ask uh, maybe uh, a child from a bigger tribe, whether they'll be willing I don't know because they have their own self-esteem, right? They have their own self-esteem. I mean, I think the issue is that I belong to a bigger tribe, so why should I go and you know why should I go and um, work in someone's place because I belong to this tribe, that tribe. So the tribe becomes very important in Nagaland. So because uh, people from uh, people from smaller tribes, they have a, uh, they have less self-esteem and they know that they cannot do much anything at all in the society hence they are more or less willing to be uh, willing to do willing to a life of servitude than a person who belongs to a, to a bigger tribe larger tribe and hence they are not willing to at least you know work in a household you know work in a work as a domestic servant i'm not saying nobody does there may be some who does it but i don't think it is it is uh, it is it is it happens in regular um uh, in, in regularly and one one way of putting it is this i i, I don't know whether i'm answering your uh, observation clear or not but where i'm helping you clear clarify your thoughts but here's the thing you see I cannot expect because you know if I belong to a backward tribe. Say obviously I am. <laughs> say uh, we cannot expect uh, a domestic servant from a bigger tribe to go and work in the domestic household of a of a backward tribe. I hope you get my point. Much in the same way, you would not expect uh, in, in 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 Hindu system in the Hindu worldview in a, in Indian society. You will not expect. You will not expect, or it would be unrealistic to even think that. A person from a higher caste would go and serve as a domestic servant in the household of a Talit. I don't know if that makes sense to you. So that would be the, the so that's the way of understanding it, I suppose. Um, I'm not sure if I've answered you, but yeah, but that's how I can you can see it. It has to do. It has more to do with psychological than uh, socioeconomic. Yeah. So. Hmm. Very very thought provoking, and I I do completely agree with you. Uh, I think that this is why, you know, we have to think about uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar again and again, and this is where the relevance of uh, Dr. Ambedkar can be felt, right? I, I remember something, uh, uh, Kanshi Ramji, uh, who was a supremo of uh, Bhagdan Samaj Party, once uh, quoted in his speech that uh, the struggle of uh, downtrodden people, the struggle of Dalit uh, people, is basically not a struggle of economic justice. It is not a struggle of for some higher position. This is not a struggle uh, for any material gain, but actually this is a struggle for self-respect. This is a struggle of uh, you know the lost rights. Uh, and I think, yes. uh, and I think you you rightly mentioned that you know basically it is a question of self-esteem. And uh, maybe Dr. Ambedkar in this context can really be uh, an inspiration. However, I here I would like to uh, quote Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. He stated that unlike a drop of water which loses its identity when it joins the ocean, man yes. does not lose his being in the society in which he lives. Man's yes, life yes. is independent. He's born not for the development of the society alone, but for the development of his self too. Now here the question comes, in tribalism, in casteism, yes. in the societies where uh, you know the, the they are infested with the notion of the caste and the tribe and the divisions, uh, the divisions within the divisions and within the divisions, where is the individual is standing? Yes. That's the question. Right? Yes, yes. And, uh, and 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 from your perspective, from since uh, I I really love to you know address you as an Ambedkarite thinker. 
so as a great direct thinker how do you how do you see you know such a such a complex reality sir Yes, I think no. I think uh, Ruth, I think you 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 are quoting all the all the good ones. <laughs> it's unfair that you are quoting all the bad guys. You know? But yeah, the thing is, is um, you rightly mentioned whenever you started this uh, this um, lecture, you in the introduction, you 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 quoted Ambedkar saying that freedom of mind is the proof of one's existence, and that I think is what we require. I think that is the whole essence of Ambedkar's idea. You must be an individual. You must be a person. You must have an identity. If you don't have an identity, then you are lost. Especially because, you see, when we speak of caste and when we speak of tribe, for instance, there is no identity. The caste system is an amalgamation of, of so many individuals that you as a person, you as an individual is lost. You are helpless. You can't do anything on your own. Much in the same way, in, in, in the sense of tribe. A tribe itself is an amalgamation of various numerous individuals. And if we emphasize the tribe, if we always emphasize the group, like the ocean that you speak of, then we are lost. But then once we maintain our own individual self, and the best way of maintaining that is, is the freedom of thought, which Ambedkar was very much influenced by the thoughts of J.S. Mill, right? John Stuart Mill. So yes. I think, as long, yes, so as long as you maintain your individual self as long as you maintain that freedom of thought then i think i think that way because you see ambedkar would not have been ambedkar if he was if he slavishly followed of the hindu system he did not if he had if he because he was an individual because he prioritized and above all, place the freedom of mind and freedom of thought above all else. Hence, he was what he was. He was Ambedkar. He could forge for himself. He could construct for himself an identity which derived from himself and nobody else. But when you speak of, for instance, when you speak of the group, whenever if 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 individuals, if persons, if people continue to derive their identity from the group, they will be enslaved. They will have no self-esteem because their very source of self-esteem, if their very source of self-esteem is backward, if their very source of self-esteem is caste, if their very source of self-esteem is Dalit, then how will they, how will they ascertain themselves? How will they show themselves and, and ascertain that I am an individual? That I am not, I will not be defined by the caste I belong to. I will not be defined by the tribe I belong to. Now, that's a very bold and courageous step which all of us needs to take. As long as we remain within the bounds of the caste system, within the bounds of the tribal system, then we cannot say that you are an individual. You cannot say that you exercise freedom of thought. Because freedom of thought and freedom of mind, which Ambedkar, prioritize requires courage. Courage to say and stand up against against conventions, against traditions. So as long as, so I think this is where I appreciate Ambedkar because if you are not an individual, you will continue to enslave yourself. You can never emancipate yourself. And that's one reason why Ambedkar converted to Buddhism. Why? Because in Buddhism, you are more or less, you, you try to ascertain your individuality. You try to ascertain you as an individual. And those kind of, if you belong to a Talit, you are not an individual, but you are a Talit. If you belong to A and B tribe, you are an A tribe or a B tribe or a C tribe. Your identity is the tribe. Hence, if you belong to a weaker tribe, then you have low self-esteem. If you belong to a bigger tribe, you'll have high self-esteem. Much in the same, if you belong to a lower caste, if you belong to a Talit, from where will you get the, the, the kind of assertion to, to establish yourself as an individual? But if you belong to a bigger, uh, uh, higher caste, you can ascertain yourself. You have high self-esteem. Why? Because you derive your identity, your self-esteem from the tribe. So yeah, so yeah, so that's that's what yeah, I feel like, yeah. So that's what <laughs> quite, it is. Quite parallel. Yes, yes, quite parallel uh, to the caste system and the tribal system. Uh, is there any question uh, which anybody would like to ask or maybe any observation if anybody would like to share? I think we have one in the chat box, Mosa. 
by uh, myself in the chat box just a second oh yeah 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 correct correct i i, I missed that in my you know i lost lost in the thoughts okay so there is our friend uh, student mosa s santa he quoted as reality as we observe seems to be quite antagonist as far as good education is concerned so uh, how do you how would you like to correlate to ambedkar discourse what mosa has observed ah okay the, so the thing is this i um uh, if by that if the if mosa is i suppose if he is asking like and that one is as far as good education is concerned then from from ambedkar view would be uh, so, i'm not ambedkar but then it seems to be quite true because you see education is a tool for emancipation whether we like it or not and if you are not given a good education then there's no way of emancipating yourself no way of liberating yourself education becomes a tool of you see how did india got its independence you have characters such as nehru you have characters such as mahatma gandhi i should say mahatma gandhi but i should say mr gandhi because i don't see him as a mahatma but nevertheless excuse me <laughs> but yeah they 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 all got a good education from from england and that's how they were able to lead the society and lead towards its independence much in the same way how did ambedkar liberate himself how did he emancipate himself given the kind of background he came from he was a dalit given that he was a dalit he got his education from colombia in the united states he got his education from lse right london school of economics and political science from from england so those are the tools of liberation those education emancipates the individual it gives you a tool to emancipate yourself and free yourself and thus ascertain yourself as an individual but i think here in nagaland i think that i i, I don't know but I, i may be wrong but my observation so far is that i think we tend to use individual as a you see i see the education system in nagaland as a way to keep people stupid the lack of i mean just to be plain the education system in nagaland the way it is right now it's here to simply make the students as stupid as possible right because they are not taught how to be a thinker they don't know how to think first of all they don't know how to think second all the students most almost all the students as well as almost all the i mean faculties as suppose they take everything literally right Every, all the understanding is literal understanding which is not how it should be education is not about literal understanding you must teach your children uh, the students how to think critically but then that is not taught the education system is outdated how are you going to emancipate your students how are you going to make your life make the uh, lives of the students good and emancipate themselves and set their own identity if you continue to feed them this kind of you know this kind of edu- uh, outdated education system where you don't teach children st- the students how to think they can't think that they cannot think anything other than literally they cannot think that they, they don't understand the meaning of metaphor they can't they don't understand what metaphor how to take the stories of a metaphor but they don't understand metaphors at all if you tell them a parable they will be they will be lost as to what you are saying and it's 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 no it's not surprised because look at the syllabus i mean uh, uh, dr anirudh you, you teach political science you just look at the <laughs> political science syllabus and you tell me hey, whether that's uh, you know <laughs> whether that's i'm uh, i'm a big time <laughs> critic of it sir yeah so so you know what i mean right so you know exactly what i mean yes yes that's, i agree yes uh, so it is in, in the sense that the, the education system in nagaland is just there to make children just stupid and keep them stupid and if that's the case then you will never get good leaders because to be a good leader you have to emancipate yourself if edu- that that's why uh, you we will never have ambedkar if ambedkar did not get education good education because of the education he got he, he was able to emancipate himself and because he was able to emancipate himself he was able to contribute and help not just in the building of the constitution of india but also in the emancipation of not just the dalits but all the underrepresented all the underrepresented and all the depressed classes of the society not just that but also his thoughts and ideas influence so many people it is it is just unfair that you know we don't we don't hear about ambedkar we just only hear about gandhi who's actually if you compare gandhi's thoughts and ambedkar's thoughts gandhi has nothing good to say he is he's a he's a big time status quo thinker right he is a status quo he doesn't say anything he does not say anything when it comes to 
when it comes to complex, controversial issues, he's always very safe. He's a very safe person, Mahatma Gandhi, and so has Nehru. You will, you need people like Ambedkar, who take stands on what is right and wrong. You see, and so much in the same way, even here, people in Nagaland, because they are not taught how to be, you know, they are not, they have not emancipated themselves. And most people in Nagaland are very, very safe. In fact, most of the leading thinkers and intellectuals in Nagaland are very, very safe. They will never take in, they will never, they will never directly and even deal with the controversial issue. Even though they know they can do something, they will not. Why? Because they are very safe. So we have lots of Kandis. No, we are not. We are not short of Kandis here in Nagaland, but we are very, very short of Dr. Ambedkar. Yeah. Uh, very true. Very true. And I think uh, it is very difficult uh, to be Dr. Ambedkar rather than becoming the Gandhi. We have Gandhi. We have. I think more than hundred Gandhis per square kilometer, sir. All over <laughs> yeah. and, and, and and we really we really know that. Uh, considering uh, the political and social dynamics of uh, this uh, wonderful nation. Uh, sir, I would like to draw your attention to another uh, reality of uh, our Naga society, and that yes, is yes. Uh, the rise of the uh, the rise of the elite population among the backward backward tribes, backward communities. Okay. Yes, like, yes. I remember. I remember what uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar uh, was getting depressed uh, at, uh, at the final stage of his life, and uh, mm. it seems uh, all his dreams uh, got shattered. And yeah. then uh, it was it was stated that uh, Dr. Ambedkar was unhappy because uh, the dreams that he was seeing for uh, for the people in the Bahujan Samaj, uh, yeah, the the greatest uh, the, the powerful community was somewhat yes. not fulfilling, right? Yes. Why? Yes. Because because the newly educated elites, yes. the newly educated elites from the Dalit community somewhat backstabbed Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Yes. So, yes. You know. So this was yes. that is the reason you know Baba Sahib used to cry and used to suffer a lot of pain because he had high hopes from the people, he had high hopes from those first IAS officers from the Dalits, first first IPS officer, first lawyers, first engineers from the Dalit communities, from the tribal communities. But his oh. dreams could not be fulfilled. So somewhere this is the same thing I am observing in our Naga society also. Uh, Dr. Salikyu, that among the backward communities, people are getting government jobs, uh, you know, they are reaching to the higher positions in the society. And somewhere they they started behaving, you know, the I mean, the, the way they should not, you know. Yes, you call, exactly. it, yes. You call it, in, in short, in short, in, in, there is a word for that. Have you heard about Sanskritization? Have you heard about yeah, yeah. Sanskritization? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah. So the... Uh, so the kind of uh, so the kind yes. of my observation is that so the kind of Sanskritization is happening in in the backward societies in Nagaland the way it happened in the Dalit societies in India the way it happened in the tribal societies in the mainland India sir and that is yes. the reason you know Baba Sahab was very unhappy and got into depression at the later stage of his life sir so what is your take on it and how to how to see and view this problem of elitism in our society over here. You're, you're very right. I mean, I, I, it's, 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 it's amazing as to your you know, observation of, of, of Nagalen, really. I mean, I, I, think, I think you should have given the speech, not me. You should have given this talk over here, not me. I think you would have done a lot more. You, you would have done a good justice to, the, to Dr. Ambedkar rather than I. Uh, but yeah, but yes, you're right. I think uh, <laughs> what, what, you, what you see is this, uh, what Ambedkar saw amongst the Talits. Same thing is happening. I think the parallel is happening here in, 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 in Nagaland as well. Because over here, you have some elites from the backward tribe themselves. And once they reach the, that status of elites, they tend to look down upon the interests of their own people. They are kind of, they become, they become blind to the suffering and the discrimination of their own people. In fact, they are the one who sabotages their own people, right? That's how it is. Just like, just like how Ambedkar was sabotaged and, and, and deceived and deceived by by own Talit community much in the same way these backward people i mean this uh, this elites of the tri uh, this elites of the uh, of the tri of the tribes they themselves are deceiving right they themselves are deceiving and exploiting the advantage of their own backward uh, of their own backward tribes it's uh, one thing i can tell you is like there's something i do not know but once say for instance a person uh, say for instance say for instance if i like say for instance 
if I become, for instance, like very, very, you know, elite, I say I became an elite uh, person from a backward tribe, then what happens is that I tend to disassociate myself from the backward tribe and tend to, tend to, tend to associate myself more with the advanced tribe. You're going to point, right? So I'll have exactly. more friends. Right, I'll right, have right. more yes. I'll have more friends from that from the from the advanced tribes. I'll have more, you know, uh, deeper relations with the advanced tribe. Sometimes I would even prefer my children to marry a, a bigger tribe. You see, from advanced tribe, you see something like this. And then we think, and once you reach that elite stage, I tend to look down upon, uh, you know, say for instance, I will tend to look down upon, you know, people from my own backward tribe because I'm too good now. You know, and then, and also because, again, this comes back to the issues of the psychological thing, because you see, as long as you belong to a backward tribe, and once you have attained an elite stage, because the backward tag, the tag itself, the category of backward, kind of, it's, it's a self, it's, it's kind of a degrading term to, to identify oneself with. Hence, in order to get away from that term or that category as much as possible, you tend to, Remove yourself from the backward community. Even though you belong to a backward community, you tend to see yourself as above the backward community and more as, you know, more as, what do you say, more as the advanced community. Much in the same way that, you know, for, like after the Second World War. After the Second World War, Japan began to see more itself as a Western country rather than an Indian, rather than, rather than an Asian country. Why? Because West was equated with prestige, right? Prestige and power and technology and wealth. Hence, Japan saw itself more as more as uh, worthy of those things than as Asia, because Asia in that time was was very very poor, right? Very very poor, no advancement, no technology. So Japan saw itself more as a Western country than as an Asian country. You see, so you can say that some kind of a some kind of a, you know Japanese syndrome is taking over, or, or Sanskritization is is happening among the backward tribes, elite tribes in here in um, here in Nagaland as well. And you're right, Ambedkar was backstabbed many times, numer numerously, by by his own Dalit community. And Mahatma Gandhi and Nehru took full advantage of it, right? They took full advantage of this. And in fact, sometimes it was Nehru and Gandhi who who schemed, who who who. who you know, skimmed, uh, skimmed, you know, such plans to backstab, you know, Ambedkar. And, and Ambedkar being a human, I, I really admire him. He was, he was hurt, you know, he was hurt. And it's very, very unfair to what happened to Ambedkar. I mean, I, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's really hurtful whenever I, I think of those things. So, yeah, so yeah, same thing happens yeah, here in Nagaland. It's happening actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely correct because, uh, you know, if you could uh, remember the incidents occurred when the elections for the constituent assemblies were going on, this Pandit Nehru, uh, then uh, Sardar Patel and uh, yes. Mohan Gandhi, they were yeah. staunchly against the inclusion of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. So, Dr. Ambedkar had to be elected from uh, East Bengal. Yes, know, yes. Uh, Jogendranath Mandal. Yeah, because of Jogendranath Mandal, Baba Sahib would, uh, you know, enter into the Constituent Assembly. Otherwise, it was uh, next to impossible for Baba Sahib yes. to get in, right. entry into that. Yeah. Yes. So, so now, now you see, uh, now uh, in this broader con uh, context of uh, Ambedkarism, uh, we reach to uh, the the another aspect of uh, uh, you know uh, our discussion, and that is the education. Uh, as uh, Mosa also observed, and you have also just explained, you know, regarding the situation of education uh, in Nagaland, that is one thing, right? But on the other hand, somewhere I feel that uh, the message of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, that is the uh, that is uh, educate, agitate, uh, and organize, must be taught to our students as well, right? Because I be, because I remember, uh, you know, the generations uh, uh, of uh, Dalit community, the Dalit and Adivasi. Uh, youth, okay, from 1950 until 1990 and onwards, right? They literally yes. got inspired and lived those words, including even my father also, right? Ah. Because those those people did not have the facilities that we have. Okay, no clothes, ah. no chapel, nothing, no ah. no books in the hand, no nothing, no food to it. But still, yes. they did not give up the education, and they become someone in life. And uh, I think that spirit I observe, Saliku, in our yes. society, you know, 
especially in our backward students also that that spirit is lacking you know that fighting spirit is lacking yes, and yes. therefore somewhere i feel that this this message educate agitate and organize which dr ambedkar delivered when he was uh, giving a speech at dadar you know before uh, in dadar in bombay before uh -huh. the gathering of the students you know that he was individually addressing that uh, tell the telling the student that you should struggle struggle yes. as much as possible to take education you know then you agitate agitate to complete your education be someone in life and once you become someone in life do not forget your own people do not forget the sufferings of your ancestors do not forget the pain of your uh, contemporaries so therefore the organization is necessary Yes. Right? So yes, this yes. is the message I, I believe is very relevant to our Naga students also, sir. What is your take on it? Please tell no, us. you're right. Uh, yeah, Doctor you're right. I mean, I, I don't think I have anything else to say because you're right. You have you have mentioned all the things that uh, that uh, Ambedkar is talking about, and you're right also to say that this spirit is lacking. Yes, there's a there's a huge. I, I don't. I think that nowadays students don't have that spirit to 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 agitate. They don't have the fighting spirit anymore. I, I, I can't see any kind of fighting spirit among people in Nagaland at all. Not just among the backward tribes, but also like in Nagaland in general. I think that that's one of the, that's, that is a great disturbing sign actually, because people are very easily agitated, but also very easily calmed. It's like a child. No, children are usually very easily agitated and very easily calmed. No, no that's the thing, and that's why that's why the education system itself is not inculcating in the students the spirit, the fighting spirit, right? That they should work hard, struggle, but they don't want to struggle nowadays. The students, they want comfortable lives. Even though they are, even though their family maybe maybe struggling, they still want comfortable life. That's not possible. You must struggle, but then nobody is willing to struggle. If and then if they're not willing to struggle, then they are they, they are weak human beings. And if they are weak, then they are bound to be exploited. By their own tribal leaders and that's what's actually happening right most of the things most of the time in nagaland is the tribal leaders the politicians the, the bureaucrats who manipulate and control vast majority of their tribes and and on top of that if the students are not given good education and if the and if the and if the education system in nagaland don't inculcate that fighting spirit the willingness to struggle the willingness to bear any kind of challenges and difficulties then how can you assert yourself? How can you agitate? How can you organize? There's no way of organizing. And, and that's, that's, what, that's what I see. And that's what I think. And that's what you have rightly mentioned. And that's what you have rightly observed. Yes, we, there's, a, there's a lack of fighting spirit among the students. And hence, because we don't have that, I think it becomes very easy to be manipulated. That's why tribe becomes very important. And that's why I said, you know, people, the, the tribalism will be, will be here with us like for a very long time. Mm, very true, very true. Uh, Dr. Salikyu, uh, we are almost uh, running short of time. Yes. And, uh, I'm, I'm really happy. You go, because see, whenever I listen to you, you know, I, I get strange kind of satisfaction. Uh, not just an intellectual satisfaction, not just an intellectual satisfaction, but also you are uh, one of uh, those intellectuals who are deeply rooted in the reality. And that is what I like about you, sir. You know, uh, I, I really... I really, I really, I really pray, okay, to the Almighty that uh, Almighty will give all strength to you, okay, to move ahead in life with all your conviction, with all the spirit. Let us, let us, let us together do what we can do for our society, sir. With these yeah. words, I, I'm really thankful to you for your time. And uh, it's, it's a very disturbing talk, actually. And uh, let us see. Thank you. Thank you so much for the uh, oh, thank you. presentation. Oh, oh, thank you, Dr. Anirudh, and thank you for those kind words. I, I don't deserve it. It's also all thanks to our God Almighty. And, you know, may, you know, may uh, our God Almighty always, you know, seek uh, his, give his ultimate blessing and enduring everlasting blessings to all of you. And then, you know, and thank you for, for, for inviting once again. And I think, I think it was, I think it would have, I think, Ambedkar's ideas would have been done a lot more justice by you than me. I think. So I think. <laughs> so, and then, and, and that, is why, that is why. That is why I said, sir, together we can, <laughs> sir. Together we can. <laughs> yes, you are right. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you. So and thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for 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 this. Thank, for this. You. thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you so much. You too. You too. Thank you.